ladies. My name is Angela Simpson. Thank you so much for coming and watching me. I am a functional medicine practitioner and I have an absolute passion for helping women, especially as they get into their late 30s and beyond, learn how to rebalance their hormones naturally. I am also a woman in this category and I do understand what it feels like to have hormone imbalance. I struggled on and on for most of my early life as a female with hormone imbalance symptoms. You name it, I had it and I tried all of the conventional techniques to help me keep myself in balance and pretty much all of them backfired. Fired. And so I did have to reach out and start to learn for myself some natural techniques that work for me to get my hormones back into balance. And after this, I went in and did my own education and went well beyond my conventional degrees, my master's and my undergraduate, and went into functional medicine and there was no turning back. And the reason for that is because I've not only found answers for myself with functional medicine and my hormone balance, I've also found answers for the rest of my family and friends. And I've really found that this is a way of living and a way of life that I want to share with you. And I hope that it's going to help you not only rebalance your hormones, but also help you feel like you get back into harmony and in sync with your overall body health and wellness, both now and for the long term. So with that, I want to talk to you today about a topic that I think is something that seems to be creeping up more and more for females, and they don't necessarily know that it's happening, but the symptoms are there. So I want to talk to you about the symptoms. I don't necessarily always love to talk about a specific diagnosis because I don't really help women based on a diagnostic perspective. I help women based on the root cause of where their symptoms are coming from in the first place, but I do think we will talk about it briefly. So if you do feel like you are suffering, for example, as you get into your, again, late 30s, early to mid 40s, or possibly beyond from symptoms of weight loss resistance, irregular periods, extreme mood swings. They may be more towards anger, irritation, that kind of thing. It can feel like it comes out of nowhere. It's not something that you're able to control that well. You also might be noticing changes to your skin. You might be having acne. It could be cystic in nature. It could be around the jawline, the hairline. There could be several different places where it's occurring on your body. It could be on your back as well. You might also be noticing changes to the hair on your body. You may find that it's thinning in certain areas and that you're also getting hair around your chin, possibly up around the upper lip. It might be around your nipples. It might be also be around your belly and your belly button. So some of these things can happen from a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And some of them may know that they have developed this very early on in life and it can affect things like fertility. But some women actually don't really know that they have this condition until they're again into their late 30s, early 40s or beyond. And it can happen for several different reasons. So that's why it's sometimes confusing for women to get a diagnosis this way or not. So I don't love to talk about it from a diagnosis perspective, but more from a symptom perspective and the root cause. So the root cause of where many of these symptoms come from that can potentially lead to that diagnosis, but not always, there is a gray area with this diagnosis, typically comes from imbalances with our metabolic health, so that's where part of the weight loss resistance comes in. Often we actually aren't processing sugars very well. We often have blood sugar imbalances when we have these symptoms. And sometimes it's also even related to stress. So many women in this time period of life are really in a what I call a go phase of life. They're busy all the time. They've got nonstop projects. They've got a nonstop to-do list that never ends. And they really are in this hyper cortisol state. They're producing stress hormones all the time. And with this, it can increase inflammation. It can also increase increase blood sugars, and it can really start to throw our hormones off balance and cause some of those symptoms that I was talking about. So that is from a root cause perspective where I find more and more of these symptoms are really coming from. And again, when you have that inflammation that gets too high, different people have different genetic predispositions for how they process hormones. And for some women, it will present in this way where the androgen hormones become more dominant. This can sometimes happen too for women as they are aging. Again, if we're under more stress, our inflammation levels are higher, it actually can cause us to process our both our female and our male sex hormones in a non-optimal way. And on the male side of things, it can actually produce some of those really inflammatory male hormones that can cause some of those symptoms like the excess hair in certain areas and acne, and also some of the weight gain and mood swings. So we want to be thinking, where is this coming from? And what can I do? Because many times what often people will do is they'll be looking for things like, can I go and get something to put on my acne? What kind of products can I do to get rid of this? 
this? Can I take something to help me with my weight loss? Nothing's working. Is there something I can take that's going to help me with weight loss? What can I do to help me with my hair health? It's thinning, it's falling out. Is there some special shampoos or, you know, things that I can just almost put on my body to put out the fire. And unfortunately, I mean, it may work for you temporarily to do this, but it's really not going to get to the root of the problem and fix things. So we've got to get to the root of it and understand what to do. So I'll give you some really easy lifestyle strategies that I have found that I put in place with women and it helps them almost right away. One of them, you may have already guessed it, is to lower your sugar intake. Now, I know that's easier said than done. So for many women that do find that they do almost crave and are almost addicted to sugar, I do suggest that the first switch that you can do is start switching some of your more really straight sugar products like baked goods and you know stuff like that to fruits because fruits also have sugar in them. But the difference is they have quite a high amount of fiber and that also can help the body to control and normalize sugars. So that would be one of the first steps is just start to look at the overall sugar and carbohydrate consumption they have coming in every day and start to modify it change the type of carbohydrates that are coming in so definitely fruits from that sweet craving perspective and that taste on the tongue but also more vegetables again both of them what they have in common is that higher amount of fiber and that can really help to stabilize your sugars and help to control inflammation in the body that spikes your blood sugars that can cause some of these symptoms and start to have negative downstream effects on your hormones another thing that's absolutely essential to help with this inflammation and controlling our blood sugars so that our hormones can stay in balance better is to make sure that you are moving your body on a daily basis. So some women tell me that they are doing this, but they may be doing it in too much of an extreme and that can actually cause more inflammation and stress on our bodies or the other extreme is they're not doing it enough. So consistency is key and doing it in moderation. Go for a light jog or a walk every day, maybe a hike, some light resistance training if you do enjoy that, but nothing too extreme. 20 to 40 minutes a day really is enough. You wanna try and focus on getting enough steps in your day, but you don't need to be in excess. So again, just a really simple, basic lifestyle technique, but something to put in place. And then the other one, again, is just something we cannot ignore, something that does tend to drive these processes of hormone imbalance, and that is controlling and managing your stress. Now, again, I know that's easier said than done. We do need some techniques. One of the easiest things that you can do on a daily basis is just stop what you're doing and whether or not you put your hand on your chest over the center of your heart or not, up to you, but just focus on your breath. Just listen to your breathing, reflect on your breathing, quiet everything that's happening around you. It could be for five seconds, could be for 20 seconds, could be for five minutes. And this will help to start normalizing that hyper cortisol state that most of us are in on a daily and moment to moment basis. So again, these are just lifestyle strategies, some basic techniques, they will make a difference. But for many women, they need to go beyond that. And you need to work with a functional practitioner such as myself to do the right lab testing. So there is ways to understand with these symptoms that you may be experiencing, again, with the changes to your skin changes to the way your hair is growing changes to your weight changes to your mood that we can get the answers to through doing the proper lab testing and creating a customized individualized lifestyle plan to help you rebalance your hormones naturally. So if this is of interest to you and you do feel like you've tried some strategies, it may have worked a little bit, it may not have worked at all, but you're looking for a way to really understand what's going on in your body from a root cause perspective and develop a plan, a natural healing plan that can help you get on track both now and for the long term, not only with your hormone health and symptoms, but your overall wellness please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to connect with you and understand the root of where your symptoms have come from and what you can do to get a solution to help you feel better both now and for years to come. You can connect with me through my website, www.angelasimpsonfunctionalmedicine.ca. There is a place there for you to book a free complimentary consult. If you do feel like you're ready to take potentially those next steps, we can have a one-on-one -on -one call and we can talk about if it might be a good fit for us to work together. And the other option on my website there is you can have a look at my offerings, have a look at my blog posts, see if it looks like it may be the right fit for you to work with me. And then you also can send me an email through my contact link there. So a couple different ways to reach out and connect. I hope to hear from you. I hope that you found this helpful. And I do look forward to bringing you more and more videos on how to rebalance your hormones naturally as a female as you're moving towards and transitioning into menopause. Thanks so much and bye for now.